guys welcome back to rocket gyan my fellow space tubers so today we will we are having another launch and what launch we are having we are having a resupply mission to the iss yes uh, a resupply mission basically we have astronauts on the iss so they need supplies food water and other life support as well as uh, scientific instruments so uh, we have that mission today so let's just have a quick lo look on the launch vehicle itself what launch vehicle are we using so we are using soyuz 2.1a medium launcher and uh, we can talk about it so uh, first of all uh, let me talk about the first stage of this so we have these four boosters uh, first of all let me tell you that all of these boosters are liquid fuel engine okay there is no solid rocket booster all are liquid fuel engine and uh, here we have so uh, these this is how it looks like guys uh, the soyuz first is composed of four boosters that are assembled around the launcher central core and they are they run at rd 107a engine which is powered by liquid oxygen and kerosene basically the rp1 engine okay and uh, each engine has four combustion chambers and nozzles three axis flight control okay okay so this is the thing this is the thing we have and uh, uh, this is the first uh, first this set separates and uh, this separates in a very beautiful fashion and it has also it also has one name uh, we call it as coriolis separation if i'm not wrong okay so now have a look we should have a look at the central core this is how the central core look, look like. Notice that uh, this central core, first of all, starts at a wider uh, diameter and then it uh, decreases to incorporate these boosters inside. Okay, so that uh, we have an even symmetrical shape. And uh, here we have it has RD 108A engine. The, notice that we have RD 108A engine. Uh, in the second stage and the boosters has rd 107a engines it also has these um, rp1 and locks as the propellant propellant or uh, and along with four vernier thrusters these for vernier thrusters okay these are the vernier thrusters these one okay and uh, okay so this is about the first stage then okay sorry the, then we should have a look at the second stage this is the second stage guys second stage it ha, uh, uses rd zero sorry third stage sorry third stage uses rd double, zero double one zero engine it's third stage or a uh, upgraded rd zero one two four engine okay and uh, basically this is a launcher vehicle which uh, has avionics upgraded in it like uh, this Soyuz is a very uh, old launch vehicle, right? In the 1950s and 1960s, but uh, with the advancement of technology, the avionics it, on it has changed. So, first of all, uh, in the early uh, olden days, we have uh, mechanical computers running on it. Now we have digital computers running on it. So we have avionics which is upgraded on it. Okay, so that's the thing. And then finally, we have a frigate upper stage which is needed if we want to. Uh, achieve an orbit which is uh, a refined orbit okay uh, and it uh, runs on udmh and nto not on liquid oxygen and uh, liquid oxygen and rp1 then finally we have the payload okay so the payload to sun synchronous orbit is this this and geo transfer orbit is this but today we are going to the iss which is in a low earth orbit okay so now we should have a look at the mission profile means uh, what it, it it is carrying so uh, as you can see the capsule will be launched on soyuz 2.1a rocket from launch complex this 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 it will carry 700 kg of propellant for iss and 135 kg of dry cargo food and water for the rodnik system so you must be wondering why do we need a propellant on iss on international space station let, but let me just tell you that uh, we have uh, uh, what we called uh, neutral particles in the low earth orbit which basically uh, uh, causes drag in any satellite which uh, is uh, orbiting the low earth orbit because of this gradually the, uh, there is a decay of uh, the orbit of iss okay of any satellite so they need a proper propulsion system to raise its orbit uh, after a certain time so that it does not just re-enter the atmosphere and burn up there so that's why we need also we have uh, uh, 
we need the these propulsion system to avoid any collision with the micro meteoroids meteoroids or space debris which uh, is uh, uh, rotating around the earth okay uh, that is the thing so we have payload mass as 7000 kgs lower earth orbit rendezvous and this is how it looks like guys the progress uh, spacecraft Pro progress spacecraft has you uh, you can see this upper orbital habitation module the soyuz spacecraft has an upper orbital habitation module a middle ascent and descent module and a rear service module okay so it has three parts in it as we can all see from here hmm, in uh, the for but for the ms15 which we are having today we have an upper cargo module and a middle refueling module and the same rear service module so in the upper we have the cargo module rather than the habitation the middle we have the fuel and the rear we have the service module which will basically use to dispose of the waste which we don't want in uh, there it will burn up in the atmosphere okay so that's the thing guys so now let's just uh, jump uh, into the comment uh, means the stream only so right now i am having the uh, this stream we are having we are having a this stream uh, we are having this stream in which uh, the we have nasa's not the nasa's we have uh, russian которых мы решили что их было очень все были очень правильные как менялась грузоподъемность let me pull up just uh, let me pull up guys the translation don't worry wait a second
Вот. Александр Юрьевич, спасибо, рассказали очень подробно, детально и вот как-то очень зримо, вот, э, так сказать, в вашем изложении вся эта картина представит. Спасибо огромное. С нами был руководитель летно-космического центра ракетной космической корпорации «Энергии» Александр Калери. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Hi uh, Vigo, hi Al Hadithi, hi Dominic, hi Thro uh, Thro Thorsten, uh, and pardon me if I pronounced it wrong. Hi everyone, guys. Здравствуйте, коллеги. Я нахожусь в Москве, в Институте медико-биологических проблем, и рядом со мной человек, который знает о космическом питании буквально все. Это заведующий лабораторией питания Александр Никитич Агуреев. Александр Никитич, здравствуйте. И вот первый вопрос. Время тюбиков, как я понял, безвозвратно прошло. Из чего сейчас едят космонавты? Я бы не сказал, что время тюбиков прошло, потому что э, соусы и приправы все-таки поставляются в небольших количествах, но в тюбиках. А в основном блюда, которые входят в состав рациона, они расфасованы в алюминиевые банки массой 100 грамм и массой 250 грамм и в полимерные пакеты разных конфигураций. Александр Никитич, а что важнее на орбите, вкус или польза? Вы знаете, это взаимосвязанные понятия, потому что польза зависит от того, сколько э, пищевых элементов, необходимых для э, функционирования организма, белков, жиров, углеводов, витаминов, минеральных элементов, содержится в рационе питания, и э, сколько э, космонавт потребляет. Но если ему по вкусу какое-то э, какое блюдо не нравится, значит, он его не будет есть, значит, он получит меньше какого-то из этих элементов. Поэтому Нельзя вот разделить вкус и, и пользу. То есть это взаимосвязанные элементы. А расскажите, пожалуйста, из каких основных блюд сейчас состоит космический рацион? Космический рацион состоит из э, консервированных блюд, термостабилизированных так называемых, из блюд э, обезвоженных э, тепловой или сублимационной сушкой, э, из блюд с промежуточной э, влажностью, то есть это вяленые фрукты, овощи, э, из... Э, Натуральных продуктов – это хлеб, орехи, печенье и конфеты. Напитки различные, кроме газированных и алкогольных. И свежие фрукты и овощи, которые периодически доставляются, то есть, скажем, транспортным кораблем. А с какой периодичностью меняется космический рацион? Значит, в настоящее время продолжительность цикла меню 16 дней. А какие блюда, скажем так, наиболее популярны у космонавтов, что они больше всего любят и заказывают? Ну, это индивидуально. Вот одному одно нравится, другому другое. И у нас поэтому рацион состоит из двух частей – основной и дополнительной. Коррекция э, рациона питания э, проходит за счет тех продуктов, которые включаются в дополнительный состав. То есть вот э, таким э, образом ну, происходит э, как бы удовлетворение. И вкусов, ну и польза соблюдается, сохраняется. Вот, насколько я знаю, космонавты и астронавты на МКС частенько меняются едой. Такое бывает. Мы вам йогурт, вы нам какие-то консервы, допустим. А вот можно так сказать, у кого вкуснее еда? У них или у нас? Значит, здесь ну, вопрос заключается в том, что есть национальные предпочтения национальной традиции. We, we have a very uh, cool information happening here, guys. We don't uh, get to see these all things. This is really cool. У нас же ведь до 19-й экспедиции на МКС был рацион совместный, российско-американский, который стоял на 50% из российских продуктов и на 50% из американских продуктов. До 20-й экспедиции. 20-я экспедиция, когда численность экипажа увеличилась, два раза стало 6 человек, было принято решение о раздельном обеспечении. Так что вот космонавты имели, имели тогда возможность питаться и нашими продуктами, и американскими. И сейчас тоже и, и астронавты, и космонавты имеют такую возможность, поскольку вот в предполетный период, который ну, в течение года до старта проводится, и космонавты... наши российские продукты. И вот есть добавка такая, это бонусные контейнеры. Два контейнера в месяц положены для каждого члена экипажа. 
И астронавты, и космонавты могут заказать как наши продукты, так и американские продукты, что сейчас и происходит. Но есть такой продукт, творог с орехами, который на протяжении многих-многих лет, ну, буквально очень положительно оценивается как космонавтами, так и астронавтами. Ну, такой номер один в меню. Совершенно верно. А скажите, пожалуйста, вот насколько нам известно, космонавтам частенько приходят посылки из дома. А, бывает ли там еда, и можно ли им там положить, скажем так, упаковать тарелочку борща? Вот тарелочку борща упаковать нельзя, Потому что эти продукты должны быть, во-первых, максимально подготовлены к употреблению, сохранять свою микробиологическую безопасность в течение, ну, скажем так, не менее 30 суток хранения в условиях нерегулируемой температуры. Поэтому вот те посылки, которые посылаются, то есть они должны соответствовать разрешенному перечню. Но он очень большой. То есть там вот есть, допустим, колбаски, там пекалини, пробки всякие, различные, ну, скажем так, джемы, там мусса и прочее, прочее. То есть все это так. Но только вот одно условие, что продукт должен быть максимально подготовлен к употреблению и должен сохранять свою безопасность. Ну, еще мы знаем, что у космонавтов все рацион и все приемы пищи строго регламентированы, чтобы хватило запасов и прочего, прочего. Но вдруг возникнет необходимость, ну, добавки захотел человек. Вот это, это возможно? Это возможно. Дело в том, что теперь мы пишем рекомендуемое меню. То есть и в процессе подготовки вот, космонавты информированы об этом. Эти запасы, которые, во-первых, вот дополнительный э, набор продуктов и вот бонусные э, контейнеры, и э, то, что присылается родственниками, и у нас есть еще отдел психологической поддержки, то есть вот эти вот наборы. То есть это э, все предназначено для того, чтобы ну, как можно э, больше удовлетворить свои, свои вкусы и свои потребности. И это не, не, не возбраняется, не запрещается. Потому что, э, во-первых, раз в 30 дней э, проходит измерение массы тела. И если, допустим, мы смотрим, что масса тела там, снижается ну, ниже каких-то пределов, значит, мы посылаем рекомендации, рекомендации о том, что нужно делать. Ну и еще э, вот те э, клинико-психологические исследования, которые проводят специалисты нашего института, э, мы их тоже учитываем. Поэтому все отслеживается. Спасибо большое за интересную беседу. С нами был Александр Никитич Агуреев, заведующий лабораторией питания Института медико-биологических проблем, который заверил, что наши космонавты не останутся голодными даже на Луне. Василий Кучушев, Константин Колодяжный и Петр Смирнов из Института медико-биологических проблем. Мы продолжаем прямую трансляцию подготовки к запуску космического грузового корабля «Прогресс МС-15». Присоединяется к нам космонавт Роскосмоса, герой России Олег Скрипочка. Олег Иванович, прошу, подходите, занимайте место Добрый в нашей день. импровизированной прекрасной студии в Центре управления полетами. В первый раз вы отправляетесь на орбиту в 2010-м вместе с Александром Калери, для которого этот полет, если я не ошибаюсь, был пятым в его космической биографии. То есть более опытный коллега передает эстафету чуть более молодому. А весной вы, собственно, вернулись из третьей экспедиции. Это замечательно, очень хорошо, что вы сегодня с нами. И сейчас в прямом эфире мы говорим на очень человеческую и в то же время на профессиональную тему – вкусовые пристрастия космонавтов. Конечно же, о вкусах не спорят, но обсудить этот вопрос со знающим человеком – это всегда довольно интересно. Тем более, что Олег Иванович пришел не с пустыми руками. Ну так что ж, первый да. вопрос к вам, Олег Иванович. Как же все-таки формируется рацион космонавта? Учитываются ли его личные вкусовые пристрастия? Ведь иногда хочется что-то посланее, что-то поострее, поперчее. Ну, у нас в основе лежит базовый 16-суточный рацион питания, <coughs> куда входят продукты консервированные. Очень Sometimes uh, seems like, wow, what? Uh, food? 
приправка у нас на земле да это ну как кто хочет пострее пожалуйста есть там перец кетчуп и горчица перец Uh, age of reason actually this is a cargo launch but cargo uh, resupply mission so that cargo has food water and all life support system so that's why they are talking about it Олег Иванович, скажите вот космос это ведь такое место особое как-то ощущения вкусовые во время экспедиции в течение времени как-то меняются ну, вы знаете, как у каждого из нас какие-то меняются определенные пристрастия. Есть какие-то общие пристрастия, продукты, там, блюда, которые человеку нравятся. Ну, сейчас, может, это надо есть, чего-то хочется больше, чего-то меньше. Как у всех людей, так и на борту. Поэтому у нас базовый рацион, но есть возможность взять некие бонусные продукты питания. Uh -huh. Да, как с российской стороны, есть специальный перечень, есть такие в штатных которые входят в рацион, и есть некий дополнительный список, из которого скоро можно для себя выбрать. Это и продукты, может быть, какие-то кондитерские изделия, там, кому что больше нравится. Но, конечно, в очень таких определенных пределах. Ну, вы так очень заманчиво рассказываете о идее, что сразу захотелось все попробовать. И об этом говоря, вопрос в этом. Есть ли какая-то схема, которая контролирует учет калорий, которые потребляют космонавты? Ведь основная задача, чтобы не увеличить свой вес к концу экспедиции, ну, весь базовый рацион, он рассчитан, исходя из космических условий. Ну, а нюансы, это уже каждый сам, под себе, сам свой рацион питания постарает под себя. У каждого из нас свой метаболизм, свои особенности. Именно поэтому на борту существует один из обследований, это контроль веса угу. на борту. Поэтому каждый может четко понимать, куда он идет. И Земля всегда знает, сколько ты весишь. Да, да? как минимум раз в месяц. Понятно. Вы уже говорили о неких продуктовых бонусах, и в продолжение вот этой темы, э, прибывают ли на орбиту продукты, ну вот, которые, возможно, не вполне предусмотрены регламентом, а которые просто радуют? Ну вот что-то-нибудь эдакое, прям совсем до души. Ну, для души семья имеет право с каждым грузовым кораблем, в том числе... Вот, вот то есть прогресс, личная семейная есть. посылка. Да, но там есть ограничения, то есть продукты должны храниться долгое время в обычных условиях. Только свежее должно быть, да? да? Because... Ну, это ну, не то чтобы свежее, это имеется yeah. там, да, конфеты, мед, какие-то закуски, которые выдерживают длительное хранение, орехи очень популярные. А вот еще так... такого Понятно, Олег Иванович. А вот еще такой вопрос напрашивается всегда на нашем столе. В быту, когда мы кушаем, присутствует хлеб. Это непременное добавление к первому, второму блюду. А как вообще с этим обстоит дело в космосе? С хлебом? Я бросаю, принес это хлеб московский ржаной. Ржаной, да. да. Есть белый, есть бородинский. Вот mm -hmm. такие мини-буханочки. То есть а не вот... надо кусать, не надо резать, а прямо целиком. А, простите, Игорь вы думаю, я вижу срок э, хранения э, в девятнадцатом. А, то есть это он уже... Ну, это, это экспонат. Это тренировочный это образцы, тренировочный это я взял экспонат. из ЦПК. То, что мы используем на наших тренировках наземных. Я думаю, нет, это все знакомо. Да. То есть да -да. пробовал? Да. А, Олег Иванович, спасибо большое. Очень вкусно все рассказали. Хочется все действительно попробовать. И а, у нас есть а, в знак благодарности этой рассказанной...
guys right now we have the uh, english subtitle stream coming up so uh, it would be <laughs> thing to be watched now they were just discussing about food but yeah uh, there were they were giving basically an uh, interesting knowledge on uh, actually what food they the astronauts ac- actually eat tend to eat in uh, on iss yeah it's an regular launch but we say it as a regular launch but the ground sta- st- uh, ground station controllers and all those men and all those who have built the rocket they always and always whenever there is a rocket launch they always have all those checks performed every time they means they uh, think that this is their first launch or every time those people those who control all this rocket because if that is not done then there <laughs> there is a serious risk of uh, you can say a failure of the rocket and if the rocket fails then the cargo and all and everything invested on the rocket because it, one rocket launch costs around that two of a soyuz cost around 250 million dollars so you can imagine how crucial it is to basically um, take uh, all those uh, precautions before a rocket launch that's what uh, they were that happened and uh, yeah we got some interesting knowledge about the food which they eat so they were talking about we have american products and russian products and whatever the astronauts o- uh, uh, order they get the those products get delivered to them so they don't have any discrimination kind of a thing whatever they o- order as see si- as soon as we means uh, Uh, it should be basically only that which they are which they have in the menu like if they have uh, uh, let's say nuts in the menu then they can have nuts from russia or nuts from america but they can't uh, order uh, pizza <laughs> that's kind of a thing and yeah uh, i reminded from the pizza that once pizza hut delivered pizza to the iss so yeah that's a thing to be noticed so here we have guys Let's just enjoy it now. Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where the flight control team here, working in concert with their Russian counterparts a half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center in the town of Koryaev outside of Moscow, are ready to support the launch in just uh, 25 and a half minutes from now of a Russian Soyuz 2.1A booster, which stands fully fueled on launch pad 6 on site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to send an unpiloted progress cargo ship on a fast track to orbit journey to deliver almost 3 tons of supplies to the residents of the International Space Station. Welcome to our coverage of the launch of the ISS Progress 76 spacecraft from that Central Asian launch site in Baikonur. The weather today is clear, the temperature is approaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit, ideal conditions for the launch. The three-stage Soyuz booster was fueled for launch about four and a half hours ago. The countdown has proceeded at Baikonur in smooth fashion. Everything is in readiness for this launch and the expedited trip of the Progress to the International Space Station. At the time of launch, the station and its five occupants will be flying 259 miles over the border between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Just 41 seconds after launch, the International Space Station will pass directly over the Cosmodrome and will leapfrog past the Soyuz booster and its Progress resupply craft as they climb to their own preliminary orbit in pursuit of the orbital outpost. The Progress is loaded with almost 3 tons of food, fuel and supplies for the station's crew members. The okay. breakdown of that cargo consists of 1102 pounds of propellant, 220 pounds of oxygen and air, 926 pounds of water and 3351 pounds of spare parts and experiment hardware. So guys as you uh, just heard what do we have in here with the cargo launch 
and resupply mission basically. Yeah, well. On Monday, the Soyuz booster with the Progress spacecraft encapsulated in the upper stage of the rocket rolled out uh, the short distance from its integration hangar at Site 31 in Baikonur to the launch pad, where it was elevated vertically to its launch position, enabling engineers to hook up fuel and power lines for the final phase of launch preparations. Again, uh, the rocket uh, was fueled uh, with its uh, propellant for the three stages uh, of its journey to the International Space Station about four and a half hours ago. Everything has proceeded on track in Baikonur. Here in Houston, uh, the flight control team led by Flight Director Chris Edelin has given uh, a go to uh, their counterparts in Moscow for the launch, which is now scheduled just uh, over 23 minutes from now. It has been a busy time for the crew on the International Space Station. The final spacewalk in a suite of four spacewalks by Chris Cassidy, the ISS commander, and flight engineer Bob Bankin took place on Tuesday to uh, continue uh, a series of upgrades to International Space Station systems. Hurley, Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin are in the process now of preparing to depart the International Space Station with their undocking from the station in the Endeavour Crew Dragon spacecraft scheduled for Saturday night, August 1st, after nine eventful weeks on the complex following their historic launch May 30th on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Their parachute-assisted splashdown, which will be the first splashdown by U.S. astronauts since Tom Stafford, Vance Brand, and Deke Slayton returned from the Apollo-Soyuz mission 45 years ago tomorrow is planned for Sunday afternoon, August 2nd. You just saw a moment ago a picture of uh, the crew on board the International Space Station, the five residents led by Station Commander Chris Cassidy, joined on board by Russian cosmonauts Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner, and of course the uh, Demo-2, uh, as it is known by its nomenclature crew that uh, launched on the SpaceX uh, Falcon 9 rocket on May 30th and arrived on the station on May 31st, Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin, who will ride uh, the Crew Dragon spacecraft back to uh, a splashdown uh, on August 2nd, weather permitting. The uh, milestones uh, for the 8 minute 46 second ride to orbit for the uh, Progress resupply craft uh, will consist of a liftoff that is scheduled at 9.26 and 22 seconds a.m. Central Time, 10.26.22 Eastern Time, which will be 7.26 and 22 seconds p.m. at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan about an hour before sunset. About one minute and 58 seconds after launch, uh, the first stage will separate. Uh, the uh, uh, strap-on solid rocket boosters uh, will fall away. The first stage will separate. The uh, launch shroud will be jettisoned about a minute later at the three minute, three second mark into the flight. That will be followed at uh, the four minute, 37 second mark by second stage shutdown and separation. The third stage skirt uh, will uh, be jettisoned at about four minutes and 57 seconds into the flight, and that will lead to a third stage shutdown and orbital insertion at the eight minute, 46 second mark. At the time of spacecraft separation, just a few seconds later, the commands will be sent to uh, unfurl uh, the uh, two solar arrays on the Progress 76 cargo craft, as well as its navigational antennas and its external television camera. At the time of launch, the International Space Station will be just 326 miles behind uh, the Soyuz. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it will leapfrog past the Soyuz during uh, ascent, and then uh, the chase will be on for the progress to catch up to the station in this expedited two-orbit rendezvous that will result in a automated docking to the pier's docking compartment less than four hours after launch. At the time of spacecraft separation, eight minutes and 46 seconds after launch, the uh, Progress and the International Space Station will be flying over southern Russia, north of the border with Mongolia, with uh, the International Space Station almost 1,100 statute miles ahead of Progress. A series of pre-programmed uh, engine firings will uh, raise the Progress's altitude to match that of the International Space Station, and uh, then a series of uh, engine firings uh, will fine-tune its path to the International Space Station with docking scheduled at 12.47 p.m. Central Time this afternoon, 1.47 p.m. Eastern Time. 
So at the launch site in Baikonur, telemetry is being processed uh, from uh, the Progress spacecraft uh, to the flight control team in Korolyov. Everything uh, continues uh, to go very smoothly. Uh, the uh, launch itself through spacecraft separation will be controlled uh, from the blockhouse down in Baikonur. At the time of spacecraft separation, flight control will be transferred to the team of engineers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside of Moscow. About 15 minutes ago, the uh, gantry arms uh, surrounding uh, the spacecraft on the launch pad at Site 31 in Baikonur were lowered. There are two uh, umbilical service umbilicals that are buttressed up against the side of the Soyuz booster. The first of those umbilicals will retract uh, at about the T minus 33 second mark. The second umbilical will retract at about the T minus 12 second mark, and that will initiate the engine start sequence that will okay. result uh, in uh, the turbo pumps coming up to flight speed and uh, the, hold on, the hold down arms being uh, retracted to induce liftoff and the start of this two orbit journey for the progress to reach the International Space Station. Launch now 17 and a half minutes from now. So guys, that was a good info. Uh, the progress is now uh, on autonomous okay. power. Everything is uh, proceeding on track, and by the timeline, no issues being reported uh, down in Baikonur. So guys, as you... The International Space Station is currently uh, traveling uh, just over the west coast of Africa, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 20... Uh, 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. On board the International Space Station, a busy day of activity for the crew, uh, led by uh, Station Commander Chris Cassidy, as uh, he uh, and his uh, crewmates work through uh, a variety of uh, science uh, research uh, investigations, as well as uh, preparations for the uh, return of uh, Doug Hurley and Bob Banken on the Crew Dragon spacecraft coming up uh, currently scheduled for Sunday, August 2nd. So guys, as you heard, the uh, Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission, they will be coming back. So I'll be streaming that also. And uh, so if you haven't subscribed till now, just subscribe and hit the like button, guys, right now. Uh, we have 100 people watching and uh, we don't have those many likes. So, uh, okay, uh, let me just explain you what is happening right now. So he, he mentioned that the... This view now from uh, a camera in the balcony of the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov uh, as uh, the flight control team there, which is in control of the Progress's journey to the International Space Station today, uh, watches uh, over their console data and uh, interacts uh, with the launch control team down at the Cosmodrome. Site 31 is where all uh, Soyuz launches are taking place uh, at the current uh, time until a refurbishment is made to uh, the launch site one that's uh, called Gagarin's Start, uh, the launch pad from which Yuri Gagarin launched uh, to become the first human to fly in space on April 12th, 1961. That launch pad is undergoing uh, some uh, significant uh, refurbishment to accommodate future launches should be back in the mix uh, in a couple of years uh, to support uh, dual launch operations off of two launch pads down in Baikonur. So guys, as he mentioned that the International Space Station must be over, it will be going overhead when the uh, there when it will be launching. So why is it going, why do we need to go to ISS to We're go We're coming overhead? up on about the 15-minute uh, mark until launch. Everything is uh, very quiet on the loops. No issues reported uh, from the blockhouse down in Baikonur as the countdown continues uh, for the liftoff. At so let me just complete it first. So guys, so uh, why do we need that uh, uh, ISS to be overhead? So first of all, um, we need to catch up with ISS, right? We need to match the ISS orbital speed to be able to rendezvous it. Also match up the orbital speed as well as the orbit. So when the uh, ISS is overhead when, and at that time only if we launch then uh, because the rocket is also accelerating we tend to get almost approximately uh, in means kind of a, you can say orbit where we can perform home and transfer 
to ISS. Basically, as he mentioned that it will be a fast track delivery to uh, four, two orbit uh, rendezvous. That means two orbit will be required to finally rendezvous with the, Final minutes of the countdown, uh, will include, ISS. Uh, milestones, uh, so that uh, rendezvous uh, happens with the home and transfer. What is home and transfer? Home and transfer is basically uh, a transfer from lower orbit to higher orbit uh, in which uh, we have the most efficient way of transferring means we have very less uh, expenditure of fuel okay that's the minimum expenditure of fuel so we we want that that's why the, we have the launch window like this and, and how can i say this because uh, uh, yeah playing kerbal space program has taught me something so this was one thing which i got uh, uh, structural support Start from it. to the rocket as it sits on the launch pad for the final couple of minutes of the countdown. The ground propellant feed uh, to the first stage of the Soyuz booster will be terminated at about the T-minus 1 minute 30 second mark, and the Soyuz will go on internal power. The booster itself will go on internal power at about the T-minus 1 minute mark. So guys, T-minus, almost T-minus 13 minutes from the launch, and we will be shifting to the launch site uh, as soon as we have the feed from there from the uh, NASA. Don't worry, we will see the launch. So just sit back and relax. Just a note, uh, once uh, the progress reaches its preliminary orbit, uh, we will uh, sign off uh, after confirmation of uh, solar array and navigational antenna deploy. And we'll be back on the air at 12 noon central time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time for rendezvous and docking coverage as the Progress uh, makes its autonomous journey to the International Space Station for a link up to the pier's docking compartment with the docking scheduled at 1247 p.m. Central Time, 147 p.m. Eastern Time this afternoon. Guys, you want to see the docking also? If you, yes, just type in the chat so that uh, if you want, then uh, I can also stream that part also and maybe explain things uh, what happens during a docking process if you want that then uh, please type in the chat so that i can come up with the stream after the uh, rocket launch the uh, progress uh, this particular progress is scheduled to remain at the international space station until early december being docked uh, to the pier's docking compartment will put uh, two progress resupply ships uh, at the station. The other one is uh, linked to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, the ISS Progress 75 cargo craft. So we right now we are looking at the mission control center at Houston. As you can see, the social distancing reform is being uh, followed here also. Uh, this should be followed everywhere because uh, uh, we only have uh, this tool to be safe from corona so uh, and in the mission screen let me explain you first of all we have this ground track uh, running on uh, on uh, this uh, the in the central television basically it is showing where is the ISS right now then uh, on the left hand side we have the rocket itself and then on the right hand side there was the views from the ISS, uh, the video feed from the ISS. So th those astronauts are also being are also preparing for the for welcoming the progress uh, craft to the ISS, uh, doing all those stuffs which is required to uh, for docking process to happen. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, everything proceeding on track uh, for the launch of the Progress 76 cargo craft. Just about 10 minutes from now, everything uh, proceeding on track. Uh, we'll be uh, receiving video from the launch site uh, as we get uh, closer to the T0 mark of 9.26.22 Central Time. Again, the weather is uh, Mostly clear, just a few uh, low scattered clouds at the Baikonur Cosmodrome, temperatures around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything is in great shape. The Progress uh, is on autonomous power. The Soyuz booster, the 2.1A booster, fully fueled uh, with fueling operations having uh, begun about five hours ago. Okay. Uh, so we will be receiving the live feed from the IS, uh, sorry, IS, uh, the 
the Baikonur Cosmodrome to see witness the rocket launch. Uh, these the the rocket launch of Soyuz is uh, basically a very spectacular one, especially the separation of the boosters, the cross which it formed, the Coriolis cross. We say it it has a special name. Uh, because of the, you can say, who made that separation. Once again, the progress is carrying uh, 2.7 tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the five residents of the International Space Station, 1,102 pounds of propellant, 220 pounds of oxygen and air, 926 pounds of water, and 3,351 pounds of dry goods, uh, meaning uh, supply hardware, spare parts, experiment uh, hardware, and other uh, items such as clothing for the crew. So guys, uh, we are eight minutes from the launch to happen and uh, everything is looking nominal right now. We are, you are seeing the views from the Houston, the control center of the Houston in America and uh, the launch is happening from Russia. So that's one thing to be noted about, noted about and uh, yeah. Coming up on the eight minute mark until launch. Okay, so eight minutes. Uh, and the countdown which is uh, you, can, you are seeing right now, it is uh, done by uh, me only so that could be uh, delayed or uh, delayed that could be delayed or maybe early uh, I'll fine-tune it once I get the official count calm down yes exotic butters how do they clean the inside of the space suits uh, well uh, this is a good question okay this view now the uh, of the launch pad at the baikonur cosmodrome on site 31 i'll answer that seven and a half minutes until liftoff we're coming up on the point at which uh, the launch key will be inserted in uh, the launch bunker by the launch conductor transitioning uh, the uh, launch sequence into automatic mode So guys, uh, you saw those uh, views from that and those classic fumes from the rocket coming about and uh, yeah, uh, all the boosters and everything there in the Soyuz vehicle is liquid fuel. That's why it is a uh, and, uh, and you also so, saw that uh, the view from the launch site only. And confirmation uh, from the blockhouse in Baikonur that the launch key now has been inserted. The next milestone uh, will be a confirmation that the range at Baikonur is clear and the Soyuz rocket is ready to begin its journey. Okay. Basically, actually, they don't clean the spacesuits, uh, uh, Bill Blake. They basically, uh, those spacesuits have an expiry date on their own uh, because the temperature there. Once again, is uh, a good look at the uh, strap on solid rocket boosters on the first stage of the Soyuz, uh, venting uh, the liquid oxygen. Uh, again, uh, fully fueled, ready to launch in less than five and a half minutes. So yeah, whatever Station meaning. Station Moscow, space to ground one for Ivan and MPEG test. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Louis Carter. And uh, what I was saying, yeah, those, uh, the cleaning, basically whatever they clean, they just air dry themselves. Uh, one, I, if I'm not wrong, once I remember, there was Inside one five minutes until launch, everything proceeding on track. Okay, let me just, we have the countdown, guys. There, as you can see. Strip chart recorders in the launch control center uh, 
which is uh, recording uh, telemetry uh, up and running. Fuel lines about to be purged. The uh, fuel line purging uh, of the rocket engines uh, are purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. So yeah, I was telling that uh, I remember one interview where the astronaut said that he's wearing the same shorts he uh, worn when he had arrived at the space station and he was about to leave the space station. So uh, you can imagine they don't need uh, those uh, much uh, uh, cleaning in there. They just air dry everything and uh, everything looks to be good. Again, uh, the International Space Station will pass directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome 41 seconds after launch and will fly past the uh, ascending Soyuz booster rocket. So at the time of uh, third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, eight minutes and 46 seconds after launch, the uh, International Space Station will be leading the progress by almost 1,100 statute miles. So that's why they put it into a low orbit. Preliminary orbit is a lower Inside orbit. Inside three and a half minutes until launch, uh, a uh, key to the drainage position at the launch site uh, has been uh, turned into the correct position. The valves through which evaporated or gaseous oxygen escapes from the fuel tanks into the atmosphere uh, are closed, and fuel is now draining back into the tanks uh, to maintain the correct uh, weight of the vehicle. The valves also provide liquid oxygen for replenishment that has been lost uh, by the boil off of liquid oxygen that you've been seeing at the launch pad. Uh, and uh, the fuel and oxidizer tanks on the first stage are now being pressurized to optimize the fuel flow as we are inside three minutes until launch. So the space suits have a lifetime of six years now. Earlier they used to have less uh, uh, years, but the upgradation of the spacesuits and all has increased their lifetime to six years right now. And uh, they have their application also, like uh, how many space EVAs they can do from the spacesuits. So yeah, that one thing that is one thing to be taken account taken into account. And guys, now we are only T minus one minute thirty seconds to the launch. And everything is looking good. There we go. We have those feed. Inside two minutes until launch, this view of the uh, Soyuz 2.1A booster encapsulated in the upper stage is the Progress 76 cargo craft with almost three tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the International Space Station. They have a four-hour journey exotic butters. Basically, they will put themselves into a lower orbit. The, this spacecraft will put themselves into a lower orbit because the ISS will be leading this spacecraft. So, so as to catch with the ISS, it will be put uh, into a lower preliminary orbit, which is a faster than the upper orbit. So that's why it will be able to Less catch than a minute until launch. We're standing by for the uh, retraction of the first umbilical that will come at about the T-minus uh, 35 second mark. Thanks, Lucas, for subscribing. I appreciate that. Uh, now, the, guys, uh, we are- The Soyuz booster now on internal power. It is now in internal power, and we are 30 seconds to the launch, guys. This is looking so good now. Uh, here we go, the retraction of the final arm. The uh, first confirmed. umbilical has now been retracted. Now, when the second umbilical 18, retracts, that will initiate 17, the launch sequence. The 16, engine starts 15, sequencing. 14, 13, 12, 11, 13 seconds 10, until launch. 9. The launch 8, command has been issued. 7, 6. There goes the second umbilical. 5, 4. The engine start 3, sequence has been initiated. 2, 1, and 0. We have engine start. Ignition. Turbo pumps now coming up to flight speed. Uh, now at maximum thrust. Maximum thrust and now ignition igni and liftoff. Land lift off. Lift off of the 76th Progress resupply craft heading to the express lane to the International Space Station. There we go, guys. As you can see. Good right roll, now. pitch, and yaw program are in. Progress heading uh, out to the northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to catch up to the International Space Station. The uh, station now passing directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome. 
So it is now performing a pitch maneuver, All guys. All vehicle parameters reported to be stable from the blockhouse in Baikonur. Everything is looking nominal and we had a great footage of the view of the launch itself. And now we'll have a great Good footage. Good pressure reported in the engine chambers. Uh, will of the separation also just see, wait and watch the separation you to happen. You are pitch and roll, all nominal, according to the launch conductor at Baikonur. Liftoff occurred right on time at 9.26.22 a.m. Central Time, 7.26.22 p.m. in Baikonur. So guys, those engines, you as you saw that after some time, these, uh, this uh, vehicle got... Uh, One minute, 27 seconds into the flight, everything reported... Uh, proceeding normally got it's uh, got itself uh, up, up the launch pad this is because so here we have the this launch view now from a camera from on the, the upper stage of the yeah. uh, Soyuz 2.1a booster here we're we about go. 10 seconds away from uh, booster shutdown and first stage separation uh, everything should be good as you can see the plume is growing uh, big now and uh, any time now we have the stage separation for the boosters. Here we go. And, and there are the booster. Go. The See, boosters now this separated. This beautiful separation, guys. These cross formed by the boosters. Uh, this is. But. Uh, wait Structural parameter parameters continue to be normal. The uh, Soyuz uh, now being uh, thrust towards its preliminary orbit for the Progress resupply craft on the power of the second stage engines. Okay, so we have the second stage engines firing up, guys. Uh, but two minutes fifty seconds into the flight, everything proceeding in great fashion so far. Okay, so everything. No issues reported from the blockhouse in Baikonur. So right now you can see the plume being widened up this is bound to happen because of the because the vehicle we reported to be stable we don't have the atmospheric pressure to there we go the fairings separation confirmed. and there is the uh, jettisoning of the launch shroud great view from the upper stage camera on the soyuz 2.1a booster the next uh, milestone will be second stage shutdown at the 4 minute 37 second mark, about one minute from now. Okay, so right now everything is looking good, but only thing which... Uh, uh, the plume, the, as you can see the plume, we can see the plume, but uh, we don't see the... There we have the satellite, means the progress craft, the views from the progress craft and we switch to animation so this is cool this now animation uh, being generated from the russian mission control center in koryov as we pass the four minute mark into the flight this is the speed which you are happening 24,000. this which is which is uh, being uh, accelerated i don't know what's the unit but yeah this is the speed and we are 35 seconds from the second, the, uh, stage, second stage continues uh, to uh, burn in nominal fashion at the four and a half minute mark into the flight. Oh, sorry, sorry, we, sorry, that's uh, not standing the standing by now for second stage shutdown and uh, separation. Yeah, that's the time, time, sorry, sorry, that's the time, 269 seconds into the flight and 16 seconds from now, uh, there will be the first stage uh, engine shutdown and the separation happening, if I'm not wrong. And here we go, the first stage engine And shut second down stage shutdown and is confirmed. Sorry, the second stage, obviously. And separation. Confirmed. Here we go, guys. The And the third stage is up and running. Third stage is up and running, and everything is looking nominal right now. The uh, Progress uh, resupply ship now uh, heading towards its preliminary orbit on the singular power of the third stage engine. Five minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. It will uh, head, uh, so next event is in 206 seconds uh, will be the uh, uh, cutoff of the third stage engine. And uh, let's see, it simulated, uh, yeah, it simulated uh, exotic butters. That's the animation. This is the real one you are seeing right now. 
uh, from the views from the satellite itself. Sat no, the Once again, structure. this view from uh, this uh, view from a uh, camera on the upper stage of uh, the Soyuz, uh, the third stage engine up and running in good shape at the six minute mark into the flight. We're about two minutes and 45 seconds away from uh, the progress entering its preliminary orbit. And guys, uh, uh, we don't, uh, I, if I'm not wrong, we don't have any camera in the third, on the third stage. That's why we are seeing the, seeing the camera, which is on the Soyuz craft only. That's why we shifted to the animation because uh, that's the thing. Yeah. Everything is looking good. Six and a half minutes into the flight, everything proceeding on track. Good uh, engine performance from the third stage of the Soyuz booster. We are about uh, two minutes away from the completion of uh, the Progress's journey to its preliminary orbit. The International Space Station is now in front of the Progress. At the time of uh, third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation, the station and its five residents will be about 1,100 miles ahead of Progress. And to catch it, that's why it is putting it into a lower preliminary orbit as the lower orbit is tends to be uh, tends to be faster. And then it will just burn the this their engine. This uh, Soyuz spacecraft will burn its engine, turn on the engine and uh, perform a home and transfer to for a two orbit rendezvous with the the vehicle ISS. reported to be rock steady and stable as it continues its climb uphill at the seven and a half minute mark into the flight. The space is so, so silent, right? And so empty. The reports uh, from the blockhouse in Baikonur continue to be good. Good uh, structural uh, stability, good orbital parameters so far. Having passed the eight-minute mark into the flight, uh, the uh, Soyuz booster traveling almost 15,000 miles an hour, 125 miles in altitude, 860 miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Uh, yeah, exotic waters, you are right. This uh, Progress Air spacecraft will uh, arrive the, around to, with, the, with the arrive ISS uh, at around four hours from now. Eight and a half minutes into the flight, but the demo two missions just a few so seconds away from third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation one day one day because they both follow follow different trajectory and uh, uh, for especially for this mission the iss has adjusted its, its orbit so as to receive this uh, spacecraft early that's okay, third stage shutdown confirmed shutdown. and spacecraft separation confirmed, confirmed. guys right here we go we have the separation to uh, confirmed of the now, now we standing have by the, for uh, solar array deployment exactly standing by for it the solar array deployment and uh, here and we the go command, uh, to deploy the arrays uh, having been issued and you can see them having been deployed uh, bill uh, if you want navigational antennas now deployed everything is good now Guys, if you want uh, the live stream for the docking also, I All, can do that. All uh, appendages, as they are called, have been deployed. The solar rays, the navigational antennas, the external television camera. So the progress uh, is now in its preliminary orbit, having completed a flawless climb to orbit following an on-time launch from Site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. So guys, if you want the stream, which will be uh, not now, right? Hi, yeah, it will not be happening right now. It will be happening from four hours from now. So if you want to want the, the, uh, that stream also, I can do that. So just type in the chat if you want that stream. Uh, I'll also stream the docking part of this uh, launch. So yeah, that is also... The view uh, of the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov, outside of Moscow. Uh, those uh, flight controllers now in control of the uh, journey of the progress to the International Space Station. This is a quick two-orbit rendezvous. The progress uh, atop uh, the Soyuz uh, 2.1A booster uh, launched into a narrow 15-degree corridor 
a very tight corridor to accommodate a precise pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit to place uh, the progress uh, on a precise course to the International Space Station. A series of engine firings now will follow over the course uh, of the next uh, couple of hours to raise uh, the altitude of the resupply craft and to fine tune its path as we move uh, toward the vicinity of the International Space Station. Uh, okay, Luis, uh, Luis Carter, if you want the stream to happen, I'll do that. No worries. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, that's a good opportunity also to explain the docking mechanism to you guys. Uh, that would be a good thing to be streaming. So I'll stream those the the docking also. Yes, Craig, uh, rock steady flight, beautiful. That's how we say it, right? Everything is looking nominal is a, a normal thing. That's not uh, uh, not not as cool as rock steady flight, uh, beautiful flight, right? <laughs> so yeah, so that that's what we have uh, for today's launch, guys. We will be back in four hours from now, and uh, this is the camera view of the Soyuz spacecraft right now, which you are seeing. This is the camera which will be used for docking also. This the view which you are seeing right now. Yeah, there we go. There are all those. Uh, and this view uh, from the external television camera on the uh, Progress 76 cargo craft that you're familiar with showing uh, the data uh, that will be instrumental in uh, flight controllers assessing uh, the path of the Progress to its automated docking to the Piers docking compartment a few hours from now. The uh, lower left-hand corner in this quadrant view from the external TV camera uh, will ultimately show the distance from the progress to the station and its rate of closure in meters per second. Again, uh, everything uh, went by the book in this morning's launch of the progress to the International Space Station, a flawless climb to orbit uh, on the Soyuz 2.1A booster and its arrival uh, in its preliminary orbit. Okay, so Bill, if you want, yes, I can stream it. So I am uh, streaming the docking that's confirmed now. So that will happen. Um, yeah, the staying was so precise. Back here right? in uh, yeah. Mission Control in Houston, in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers uh, monitored the uh, launch of the Progress and its climb to its preliminary orbit, now working in tandem with their Russian uh, flight control counterparts, uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. That'll wrap up our launch coverage for this morning. We will be back on the air in about two hours and 20 minutes at noon central time, 1 p.m. Eastern time for our live coverage of the rendezvous and automated docking of the progress to the International Space Station. In the meantime, that wraps up our launch coverage for now. This is Mission Control Houston. So guys, as you heard, two hours from now, we'll uh, have the launch coverage beginning in, uh, so I'll stream that also. No worries with that. And uh, uh, so, thanks Yash for subscribing. I really appreciate that. And uh, uh, I'll explain you the docking mechanism and all which happens and uh, how it will happen. So it will be a cool thing to watch. But if uh, if I'm not uh, wrong, basically uh, we can do a Kerbal space program simulation for the docking. That will basically explain you everything. Not everything, but most of the basic things which uh, are required uh, for the docking process. So I'll do that. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Uh, yeah, uh, if I conclude the stream, we had a beautiful uh, view from the Cosmodrome uh, launch pad. We first we saw the discussions about the um iss uh, the food from the iss uh, the thanks sparta beer reviews for subscribing uh we saw the views from not the views we saw the discussion about the food that is delivered to the uh, iss for the astronaut and that was something which was very informative then uh we saw the beautiful launch uh, the uh, beautiful lift off of the soyuz vehicle which happened right after uh, at precise timings at t minus zero seconds only and yeah one thing which is to be noticed which i was telling that those ignition uh, we had the liftoff actually 
took time they the engines ignited uh, uh, very early but the lift off took time thanks to it uh, for subscribing and uh, uh, th- that was because that was because uh, the turbo pumps which are there in the engine basically those turbo pumps are used to feed the engine with the propellant okay that that is used for that and that turbo pumps require some time to come at full speed to feed uh, the engine with full uh, the yeah you can see the full propellant the need the propellant need which it uh, which, which the engine requires it needs some time so yeah for the uh, turbo pump need some time to come at, at full throttle and after if uh, it comes at full throttle the vehicle lifts off so that's some basic science Oh, oh Craig, uh, you are a pilot, so that would be a good thing to uh, uh, getting comment from you only. That was a precise maneuver. Yes, the rocket maneuvers needs to be precise because if it is not precise, then we can have a blunder with the orbit, and uh, that blunder could result into a mission failure or ultimate death of the uh, payload. Be- because it can re-enter the atmosphere which happened today uh, with uh, my Kerbal simulation I was planning I was plotting the trajectory for Duna encounter and I ended up uh, hitting the atmosphere and everything crashed so that thing is to be taken into account so thank you so much for tuning in guys we'll be back in two hours from now so just stay tuned with me and uh, yeah uh, stay safe Stay healthy. This is Priyanshu Royla signing off. Thanks for tuning into Rocket Gyan. Stay safe, stay healthy and bye-bye.